Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello, Kin. Hello there. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good today. It's a beautiful day here on the West Coast in the US. Uh, it's a very nightly day here in London. <laughs> um, hey, everyone. Welcome again. Took me a while to go live because I forgot how to remove the video, but here we are. And hopefully, you can hear us, you can see us. Um, let's start with quick introductions. You may know me, you may not. I'm Arlemy, developer advocate at Postman. As I mentioned, I'm located in London and I'm here with Kin. And I'm Kin Lane, chief evangelist at Postman and uh, co conspirator of Arlemy's here. <laughs> hey, Sean. Hello, hello. So, a few things today, quickly. What do we have on the menu? Um, as usual, I start with a quick, uh, in case you missed it, uh, walk through what you may have missed or may not have missed, and then we'll make AI art. Um, what does that mean? I don't know. Kim is going to tell us. <laughs> I, I don't know either. I'm hoping I, uh, our audience is going to help us, but uh, we'll, we'll explore it at least. So. Yeah, I think we, we will be able to start already with a definition of AI, because I know some people may have different ones, and there's always like, I'm not going to say misconception because just different conceptions of it. Yeah. Um, so let me start. I'll share my screen, show you a couple of things. There we go. And let me make sure. Somehow I can't show our faces. No. Yeah, there, there we, we go. Are. Cool. All right. So in case you have not heard about it, there's a Postman API hack going on. It started. A week ago now and it's finishing in another week so if you want to take part in it you should get started with it now i'm going to post the link to it in the chat right here uh tldr what is it kin you want to give us a oh it's <laughs> a it's a hack to uh demonstrate your knowledge of how to use postman and how to use apis so really the the end deliverable is you've got to you've got to have something you can put into a public workspace and demonstrate it to us but really that's pretty wide scope of things because if an api can do it you can make a collection that will talk to that api and you can put that collection into a workspace so uh, you can do quite a bit of different things. So you could showcase an API, you could build an API, you could automate with APIs. Uh, there's a lot of examples here on the on the site. Yeah. So apart from that, one thing that Kim did not mention is that there's a cash price as well, which may trigger your interest, may not. Um, but yeah, that, it's also part of it. So if you're interested in any of uh, these reasons, Kim mentioned examples. So you can go in uh, the link that I shared in the inspiration tab. And there's a few public workspaces here, uh, which kind of show you what we uh, what we want you to build, or kind of stuff that we'd be expecting. So, for example, if I open that one, uh, it's a collection that is publicly available, and it shows how to create a Slack weather bot. So it's a Slack bot that you can ask about the weather, and it tells you. So all the documentation is here. Tells you how to get your credentials, etc. Um, so that's the that's the one, and then yeah, obviously this is on a public workspace. So as I mentioned, this is 
available for anyone if I go in and click the window. I can also access it. Uh, so yeah, TLDR. Well, and you mentioned, I knew, I forgot to mention the money. You mentioned the money. <laughs> you didn't mention how much money. So True. it's, uh, it's $100,000 in prizes, but there it's broken down over a couple different things. So don't worry, there's like, a, a, there's top prizes, but then there's, there's five thousand uh, dollars prizes for for several other uh, you know so the lower end of the spectrum. So um, there's something for everybody. So don't feel like you're not you know if you don't ever win anything. Um, I think there's a pretty good opportunity you could here. Is there something for me as well? Uh, for you, no. Sorry, <laughs> there is no yeah. winning for you. No. Oh, no. Uh, unfortunately, postman, we cannot do it. But True. we can make really cool workspaces and really cool examples from now until the finish time and uh, show people what what's cool. Okay, I guess, guess, guess I'll have to do that then. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, uh, cool. So that was the that was the hack. That's kind of the one in case you missed it. Um, we've mentioned in previous streams and uh, uh, maybe on webinars that there's a big update to Postman coming up that you can check out on uh, Postman Canary. So if you're interested, it's something you can get from here. So that's the Postman V8. Uh, if you want to try it out, you can get it there. Uh, so no, no new release of Postman, no big news, uh, but you'll soon get a brand new version of it, which will bring a lot of changes. Um, quick question from Hannah. What are the tax implications? Wow, I have no clue. <laughs> uh, I think you have to work that out with your accountant. The tax implications are your responsibility. And depending on uh, what your tax bracket is and uh, your income, it will vary. But uh, yeah, that's a pretty pretty serious grown-up question. <laughs> and it's probably depends where you're from as well. Um, so this hack is worldwide, right? Mm -hmm. But from maybe like a, Minus a handful of countries that we're yeah. not allowed to. So yeah, which are listed, I think, on the website. But yeah, uh, something to figure out on your on your end. Unfortunately, um, <laughs> you have to give me ten percent. You can't troll on the chat and on the stream. You have to have <laughs> to um, cool. So AI, yeah. What is AI? Ooh, AI. So in, in our, we, we love our acronyms, don't we, in, mm -hmm. in develop our world. So uh, we're talking AI APIs. So uh, AI is artificial intelligence, which is kind of a big umbrella for, for a few different things. Um, and you'll, you'll learn in getting into the AI world that it, it kind of means a lot of different things to different people. And there are some some kind of clear definitions of the different segments of artificial intelligence, like machine learning. Machine mm -hmm. learning is kind of one of the family trees within the, the artificial intelligence. And it's machine learning is how you uh, train algorithmic models to do different things. And there's many different things AI can do. AI could could uh, process images, AI could process video, it could work with audio, it could work with text. Um, there's lots of different things that you can do with, with uh, machine learning um, and, and artificial intelligence. But artificial intelligence is kind of the bigger tent for it all, but it's really the application of, it, of these different things. Like if you, once you build your machine learning models, um, you can execute them and that's kind of intelligence, I guess, machine mm -hmm. intelligence or artificial intelligence to a certain degree. Um, and then there's a lot of other areas like neural networks and, um, but I think we're just gonna kind of stay in the machine learning realm, which is 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 pretty clear yep. AI, AI, so. And machine, machine learning is very specific to one end, right? Like you train it on a specific model and it's gonna do that one thing. Yeah. And then yeah. there's, Deep learning, which is when you just let the machine do whatever it wants to do. And it, and it learns <laughs> on its own and then overthrows the world and kills yeah. all human beings. Yeah. I'm yeah. actually reading uh, Ready Player Two at the moment, which is very oh, yeah. like AI heavy. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's a, that's a good stream for me to be on. Yeah. Well, I, the line between sci-fi and uh, artificial intelligence is, is very blurry because I think a lot of our beliefs around what is AI comes from what we read and what we see in <laughs> science fiction. So it's uh, it's interesting. 
And then you and then you get to try to create your own models, and you realize that we are very far from <laughs> from any any of these. But yeah. Um, but yeah, so I think that's yeah, that's a great definition of AI, and I think you see well, right, like how machine learning is a subset of AI um, and AI art. So you've done some stuff already with AI art. Yeah, I I think I I would like to kind of share my uh, quick version of my ver my journey with 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 AI art, and then kind of articulate where that where I would like to go next with it. I mean, I'm not entirely sure. And then I wanted to open it up and see if we could explore and expand it or just go down entirely new paths that that we didn't anticipate here. So, I'm, you know, let's start with what I know and then let's quickly get into what I don't know, I think <laughs> is probably a good place. So cool. <laughs> let me share my screen. Yep. All right. <laughs> So, um, so yeah, um, both of us work at Postman. So this is 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 very is going to happen. We have a public workspace where we'll be kind of following this work, and the work will live beyond uh, beyond just this session. So that's the beauty of a public workspace. So this is something I do on a regular basis um, to kind of blow off steam. If you don't know who I am, um, I've been doing uh, APIs for about ten years, um, and I joined Postman last year. But if you ever read my blog, API Evangelist, you'll see, you'll notice these different images um, that I use. I don't, sometimes I use Postman images, but if it's my own writing, you'll notice that you always see these, these kind of different little images. Um, here is a blog post on federal agencies and here's, a, here's the capital. You'll, you'll see these and a lot of people like don't really understand what I'm, <laughs> what I'm doing, why? You know, it's like, all right, I'm gathering my thoughts. And so, for me, the, there's a kind of a sub commentary going on with with my my photos here, and this this is my my algorithmic art hobby. Um, ca I call Algo Rotoscope, um, and so I have a site uh, you can visit. It's uh, called Algo Rotoscope Work, um, but it's it's where I kind of started in this journey in playing around and building art with my own. Um, I originally started it with my drone. Uh, videos. So um, taking drone videos and uh, applying um, algorithmic filters to them. And so this one is a, a place in Oregon on the west coast of the U.S. called Gold and Silver Falls. Um, I flew my drone up the falls. That um, is trippy. <laughs> and so, and then I used a tool called uh, FMMPEG to basically separate out all of the images because it's what 60 frames per second, so 60 photos per second. Um, I think this is like probably a three or four minute video. So there's a thousand or more images. And then once I had those images, I uh, you can see it hiccup a little bit where it, yeah. uh, it put the images back together properly, I think. But I applied filters to them and then I reassembled it as a video. And this I learned is very costly to do. Um, it, it, when I first started it back in 2016, I had uh, I had just had some startup success, so I had some money, and I could pay for the the GPUs. But you can see, um, you know, I have different uh, drone footage that I've gone through, and then but putting it together sometimes it skips. You gotta you gotta do it well. And then the drone footage itself, I think this is actually the sunlight flickering in the video, which made the, the filters like uh, kind of flicker like that. But I flew up this canyon and once I realized, oh, this is getting pretty costly and I didn't have as much money about uh, six months later, <laughs> um, I kind of started diving into uh, building uh, basically the the filters that I applied to the, the Gold and Silver Falls in the Smith Canyon those were uh, someone else's filters. And I reverse engineered how they built those filters um, and started training and building my own ML model. So ba back to what we said about machine learning is I was using someone else's ML models and they used, and most roads in um, ML right now lead back to TensorFlow, which is an open source machine learning platform. And so there's a lot of resources out there for building your own uh, machine learning models. And I had used a, a company called Algorithmia, which is pretty interesting. I'd use their um, Algorithmia. Not I'm just algorithm. gonna 
we got raided in the same time. I think that's our first raid on the channel by Dave Churchill, who's raided us with about 30 viewers. Hello, everyone. Hey. Join the stream. We're doing AI art. King yeah. is walking us to what he's done up to up to now, and then we'll jump in and try to create some AI art just ourselves. Yeah. yeah, see what we can do here. Welcome, everyone. Oh, yeah, we got, we got quite a mix of folks. Cool. Um, and so... I started applying my own, training my own model. So I trained this on persistence of time. I took a handful of my own photos and then I, I applied that machine learning model. But this is very, you have to fire up um, a, a, a GPU server on Amazon to be able to train models. It's pretty costly to do this and pretty uh, uh, time intensive. And so, I stopped doing the videos and I started doing the images and I started getting some interesting, all these photos are taken by me um, and, and I started applying them. And then the 2016 election happened and I got a little bit more uh, radical in some of my, um, my uh, images that I trained on. So this is a, an old uh, Uncle Sam, um, it's a, a from the turn of the century, the, going into the 19th and 20th century of, of how we viewed immigrants and migrants. And I trained an ML model on it, and then I started applying it to my different photos. Um, some of the border wall down in San, uh, between Mexico and California. So quick question here. So you, you yeah. say you applied the, the model to it. What do you train with? Do you train with art then? Do you train, what's yeah. your model like? So this, I'm training on this image right here. Okay. And the the ML model, I didn't actually make the um, the TensorFlow. It came out of a university in Illinois. Um, a, a professor built it. Um, and all I'm doing is firing up a GPU server saying, look at this image. And what it does is it runs for about three days straight. And uh, um and then it takes all of the colors and textures from this image and then creates a, a model itself, a, a, a model that I can then execute against any photo. And so this is mine. It takes about, cost me about $25 to make one of these GPU, <laughs> Amazon GPU. And then I can run it against any of my photos. And some of them are interesting looking and some of them aren't, but, um, you know, in this case, I'm trying to take my photography, apply the colors and textures of this image, mm -hmm. and then transfer not just the color and textures, but the meaning. You know, this is this is the actual border crossing right here on the top right, um, or middle too. All, all three of them actually are border crossing. And so I'm taking a, 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 st a view of, of immigration and applying it here, trying to be... My goal with Algo Rotoscope is to really... Um, uh, highlight how algorithms are distorting um, the conversation around us and this one being the immigration debate. So my goal with this this art is to demonstrate that that algorithms are, are just, you know, by a Facebook feed and Twitter feed are uh, kind of distorting the message, the conversation around immigration. And so I, you'll find these images regularly on API Evangelist and you probably don't know there's the meaning here until you kind of click and you do, and you look at what, what uh, the work that I've done. But just to give it one more example of this, here's um, this top right is a Russian propaganda poster from uh, 100, 150 years ago. And it's uh, handing out little leaflets on um, this big red uh, menace. And then again, I've applied it to some different photos I've taken. Um, I think the the best one I like is down here on the right corner. This is actually taken from the West Wing of the White House. So um, when I worked at the White House, it, I took this photo, but recently just applied it with this Russia propaganda, trying to make, again, make some statements about what's going on. But yeah, really just taking the, the colors here and applying it to what's what's happening. So so yeah, well, we'll quickly, buy, yeah. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I was, I was just going to ask the question to you, which is, do you want to remodel the photos according to a night style? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's kind of my goal is, um, and I, I want to pause here and kind of the, I have some of these questions or concepts in the, in the workspaces. First of all, you know, I'm, I'm trying to answer for myself, what is art? I mean, I think art is, is 
means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. So um, am I remodeling the photos according to an art style? I would say yes. I think a lot of people feel that, you know, here, if I take the persistence of time, I'm actually stealing from uh, uh, from this art and, and then applying it to my own photo. So I didn't feel like this was me expressing art. It was almost algorithmic theft um, <laughs> to a certain degree. Um, but once I started, oh, here's another one that I did, Birth of a Nation, um, which is a, a popular movie in the US, our, our first movie. Um, and I, again, applied it to some different uh, kind of iconic photos I had taken. So once I started going into this realm, I felt like it was more expression. Yeah, I'm, I'm stealing from the birth of a nation. I'm stealing from America's dumping ground and I'm stealing from Ru this Russian propaganda poster. But then I'm expressing it in this new way that hopefully rises to the occasion of our level of art. I don't know. I mean, I, I, you, you guys have to tell me. I, I don't quite feel like I'm there. So am I according to a certain art style? I would say no, I'm trying to kind of bend and distort um art styles in different ways and that's i guess kind of what i'm trying to do here to answer your question wheelbot sc yeah i think that's probably i think we got the kind of the perfect ref for that i'm reading about uh, i have to say i was just reading about what dave churchill does and he's a he's an artificial intelligence researcher uh, and computer science professor so i'm guessing people that are watching him are completely interested in this or somewhat interested in this so if you have any like recommendation or any opinion that you want to share here so please feel free yeah please um so that's been my journey right now um i'm very very um a little bit activist oriented in my in my ai art i'm trying to again stick with that message of you know uh, uh, algorithms are distorting our world around us and i'm trying to to come up with different ways and so i'll keep finding interesting images to train my 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 work train my models on i'll keep building models i'll keep applying it to my photos to to create in, interesting um applications um but i don't i feel like these photos just aren't enough you know because it's my photos and i'm applying a filter or i'm starting to play where i'm grabbing other common photos from uh the world around us but again back to stealing um do I have license to use those photos? <laughs> um, no, I don't. You know, if I take an AP uh, image of President Trump or a protest, um, you know, can I use that? If I if I if I apply one of these filters, is that changing it enough? Is that evolving enough where I can then call it mine? Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm not really looking to argue that in a court of law. I just <laughs> I feel a little dirty. That's a so. Yeah, that's a very interesting one. I think uh, it reminds me that Twitch went through an issue with that on the music side where, and I think YouTube as well, right? Like when people yeah. would just like sing themselves a song and they would just get like copy strikes straight away or get a DMCA just because they were singing a song like a cappella, right? Like not even with a yeah. background music or anything. So yeah, you, you would probably reach some sort of like weird place here as well, but I have AI legal stuff. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, and that's honestly one of the boundaries I want to push. It's not just showing that algorithms are distorting our world. I want to show that digital is transforming our world and transforming copyright and intellectual property, I think, is a really important thing. And uh, algorithms and machine learning are, are going to keep um, enabling uh, artistic theft. You know, um, it's going to do a lot of different things. So I, these are all conversations that I would like to have. So. So with that said, that's been my journey. Um, you know, I let me pull up the the workspace that we're working from um, and drag it here is, so that's kind of, I shared the links here, but you know, I've tried going in different ways with this art and different ways algorithmically. One thing that I've done is um, I created this, this runs in an automated way. Let's see if, what happened? Why did you go away? So, this is the us narrative today which what it does is is it pulls the news articles from newspapers across the country and i don't know how many are left that it keeps pulling let's look it keeps getting shorter 
Um, well, it's still got quite a few. And what it does is it takes the top headline from each newspaper and then adds and makes kind of a, a I don't want to say a poem, but puts it into four lines and breaks it out. And some of times it's incoherent to read, but sometimes it's pretty interesting to read. And then what it does is it, it grabs one of my algorotoscope photos based upon keywords and then injects it into the photo. And this just runs in an automated way um, every day. I don't, uh, you know, I, I actually don't check on it that much anymore. It's been <laughs> run, running for a year, over a year or two years now. And like this one today is not done formulating. You can tell it's still waiting. Um, and so, you know, this is one direction I've gone marrying going, I would say with text and marrying my imagery with, with text and news to make it more contextual. Um, oh, and I closed the workspace. Um, let me reopen, close tab and go back to the workspace. Um, so anyways, that's kind of my journey here that, you know, I wanted to share with you. Um, oh, I hate it when it <laughs> does that when you just highlight something. So, you know, we talked a little bit about, well, what is our, you know, the copyright usage licensing, um, yeah, I was Why? actually going to come to yeah the next point because you you talk you talk about training models you talked about GPU and yeah I mean and but you started talking about AI APIs right so how do you how do you trigger this through APIs or are you talking about lower level APIs just like system APIs? Yeah, I mean that's one of the really tough parts about this and and honestly like tough for this stream is Postman is a, a, a HTTP API to client so you can build and and consume a certain slice of APIs, a very popular one, but it's just one type of API. And when you're doing things with machine learning, TensorFlow has APIs, but they're lower level programmatic APIs. They're, they're not using HTTP. They're not using the web. They're, they're, they're you use them at the command line, um, use them programmatically, and they're very powerful APIs, but you can't make calls over the web and using Postman with them. You have to uh, be a little more command line literate, and which is fine. I, I like going down that road, but um, web APIs simplify things. And so I'm a big fan of wrapping APIs or, or ML tooling and models into uh, as different APIs. And I guess that's where we can start is um, I showed you, or I talked about algorithmia. This is a pretty pretty good place to start um, when it comes to machine learning. If you want to kind of be spoon fed it, you don't have to figure out a lot of your GPUs. It's not as costly um, as you, it's kind of pay as you go. And um, it's, it's pretty interesting the types of, uh, my one password, and my fingerprint. All right. Um, and once you log in, um, you it's kind of like any other API place where you have your your ba account balance, how much you've spent, um, how much you've used. You got your API keys, which I won't click on. You can add your own algorithms, um, but what's beautiful is you can start diving into other folks' uh, algorithms. And here's kind of some of that those breakdowns that I showed you is they have a whole section for just text analysis. Um, and, and then and you can, so my understanding is that you can update these models, right? And you can tailor them to what you want. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And so it's not just uh, using models. It's you can build them, you can apply them, you can yeah. host them. And they have a whole, you can scale them and, and they have a whole back end that's pretty, pretty amazing. It, it's one of the things that seems to, I mean, I guess if you're just getting started and you use AI APIs just like the AWS one or Azure one, um, it's very straightforward, but there's a lack of personalization if you want to go further into the machine learning side, where yeah. most of the time it's like send a call with some data and it's going to return something, but you can't customize it to what you would like. Yeah, you can't, there's, you hit a wall pretty quickly. Once you, it whets your appetite, I would say. So I, you know, I spent the first year kind of my journey using Algorithmia and then I um, got hit that wall and I went down another year journey of learning TensorFlow, spending about 
uh, two, three thousand dollars on GPUs and um, to to build my to get where I could build my own models because I, I I was a little frustrated here. Um, but that I think is just part of the journey. And but I think this really I could now upload all my ML models here and and sell them. This is actually a marketplace, so I can actually charge for access to them. So it provides a really interesting uh, approach. Um, some of the some of the interesting ones, you know, so here's the one um, deep filter. Here's the one that I started on was deep filter. And so this is, um, they give you a set of filters. And if you look at the, the gold and silver fall, see if we can't reload this page and just look at the filter real quick. So let's look at that and then try to see what it's one of these filters is what it used. I don't know which one, but it's <laughs> maybe this one. Um, but yeah, so this is where I got my 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 feet wet, kind of learning what's going on. And there's actually an Algorithmia um, Postman collection um, okay. that I found. But the problem is, is it's just purely a collection for the management of, <laughs> of of your uh your algorithms so you can come here and and it'll let you manage your organize them into different groups and you can add add your algorithms um create them add them manage them all of the things but you i want i want to actually apply the algorithms and use them so i had to create my own um talk to them and get them to do it where was it here it is so you know, I wanted to actually start using the deep filter um, algorithm and they've got an endpoint here. Let me zoom in a little bit to help yep. with the old folks like me. Um, I'm starting to not be able to see my own screen. I'm gonna have to adjust it and always <laughs> go and be that old guy with big font. Um, but basically we have a, a base URL here for the algorithm API V1 and then it, how you apply it is based upon username, algorithm name, and then version. Now, I've got three path parameters that give me that here. And if you look, if we go back to the deep filter, if you look right here at the top of each page, here's the user, here's the algorithm, the, the model, here's the version. It's always at the top of the page. So it actually really makes that really easy to do. Um, but then you have your docs here, um, how to apply it. They're again, it's machine learning, so they're very much incentivizing the command line approach, and the examples they give you are are very uh, command line focus. But you can just grab these these payload bodies and use them um, in a collection. And so back to the postman one here. Let me pause and see if anybody's asking questions. I don't want to just keep talking. No, I would, I would, I would cut you off. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, I appreciate it, man. That's why I love having you on these. Um, so, so now um, I already did some key stuff, so we don't have to talk about that. Went and got my own key, created an environment, um, and then let's see if what my body looks like. So I've got Im an image variable. Now here's this took me a little bit to learn with. Um, with Algorithmia is you have your own data store where you can put images. You can map it to S3, you can map it to Dropbox and, and use other stores. But basically what I'm saying here is grab this image um, and then save the image here. And then here's uh, the filter that I wanna use. And the filters are all these right here. So these names, yellow collage, yellow paper. So you've got, you you don't you don't have your own filters you, you have their filters that you can use and so um so that's I, that's because you use their, their deep filter but you could add yours right yep yep you could add yours and run the exact same thing if you wanted to train your own models and then upload your models um and so here in, in algorithmia you have your algorithms which were on deep filter and you have your data sources. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this in a new tab um, and you can upload. Um, so I have it, I have one bound to AWS three, but I'm just gonna go with my, my hosted version of it here. And 
Um, I have some different images from the Capitol protest or uh, insurrection, we'll call it, you know, to stick with my um, my kind of radical uh, yep. uh, political approach. Yeah, so here <laughs> we've got an image here. Um, it's in demo capital, external capital protest. So let's go back here. Um, so I'm gonna change this to capital. And then what was that name? My mem short term memory. I'm I'm as bad as Joyce is with short term memory. <laughs> Well, wow. um, she did not for anything, and there she goes. <laughs> uh, let me see. I just hit copy. Oh, so they give you the whole URL. Man, that's <laughs> So don't be as dumb as I am. Click on the little copy button next to the, the URL here because it will give you, uh, give you the full URL, and you just paste it in here. Now, what do I want to call this? I want to, I want it's going to output it. Um, let's call it, uh, what is it? Capital protest pizza or what is it <laughs> space pizza. Um, and then I'm using the space pizza filter. We'll see, see what gives here. It takes a little bit, um, cause this is that GPU, but it, it takes seconds where if you're building your ML models and doing them, depending on the size, um, yeah, I feel trade. like the, yeah, this got better. Um, not that I've touched it like recently, but I've I've looked about like TensorFlow Lite, etc., and they've improved that like ten times, twenty times. It, it's a bit crazy, but yeah, GPUs are costly, so optimization <laughs> uh, at this level, there's a lot of incentive to optimize, um, and. When you're training models, you know, like I said, it can take days uh, to train a model. And that freaked me out at first because that, you know, when it's like the Amazon GPUs are like a dollar an hour, you know, type thing. And you're like, yeah, you're like <laughs> watching your clock and you're starting to sweat it. But uh, they've got it dialed in here. But this kind of um, maybe my image is too bad. I might it might come back with a timeout because they do um, limit the size that you can run. Now I think they have where you can pay for more and get more GPUs and get more um, compute behind it. But um, sometimes it's gonna time out and I it's kind of a bummer if it does for, for this call. But <laughs> um, uh, ideally it comes back and they've, whatever their pizza, space pizza. So let's go look at their space pizza. Um, right well, there. So here. <laughs> Here's the space pizza one that, that we're applying. And then here's the photo that I'm applying it to is, is the protest from the, the insurrection. Uh, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> I ran a few of these, so I don't know if, if that's going to be a good one to do. Let's, uh, hmm. well, let's, let's keep that running and then we'll, we'll keep evolving here. Um, and we'll check back in because so with algorithmia, you know, there's there's quite a few other things that we can do. Um, you wanna you wanna make sure and search. There's like um, there's a couple that I I've never done charcoal sketch. So if you want to uh, turn a photo into a, a, a sketch, there's one that you can do here. Um, while this is running. Let's go ahead and um, try to create a charcoal sketch one. I've got kind of a template request here, um, and I'm going that I can just duplicate so that I can. Uh, um, we'll just call this charcoal, and then let's go back to the docs here. Not that one here. And we're gonna grab this B can charcoal sketch 1.5. And let's just split these up here between these parameters. Would have been probably easier to just paste it in the URL rather than use variables, <laughs> but okay. Um, just good practice, skin. Yeah. So there we've got our, our properties. Um, I've got to submit a body here. Um, let's just go raw. And let's go back here and see what their body payload looks like. So you just, again, got a basic one here. Does the source have to be on your data source or can you put an external image in? Um, good question. Let's try that.
I've got a uh, browser. Whoa, what happened there? Um, got some photos here that I've taken. These are my photos. Um, let's see. What, what's some of these? Let's take this one. I don't know exactly what it is. We'll grab the URL. So this is an Amazon S3 URL. Um, let's go back here. And let's see. Let's paste it. And then we'll call this broken glass. Let's see what we get. If we get something else running just for a few minutes, I'm going to check back in on deep filter while we're doing this. Oh, deep filter. So <laughs> Man, I hope these just don't, I hope these give us some, some fruit for our labor and we're just not running machine learning algorithms here. I ran a bunch before we started just to make sure that everything was working, but um, we'll find out. So now we've got a deep filter uh, pizza running on the Capitol protest image. And we've got a charcoal one running on, um, I don't know what this, this one is. Let's look at what this image is. Um, oh, I took a picture after a protest in Oakland that I thought was somewhat interesting. So um, we'll just save that here and then see if it will process external images as well. Let's see. Yeah. Hey, Gabriel. We have people joining. Hello. We have fast cache coding thing. Very cool. Well, we, we'll see if it's cool. We're just waiting for now to see if it comes back at least, and then <laughs> we'll, we'll take a call. Well, let's, let's start. Let's, let's have conversations beyond algorithmy, I would say, because, yeah, you know, that, actually, I, was, I was just going to ask the chat if uh, you've seen any, any usage of AI in art that you can think of it, that you want to share with us. I have one. Uh, that I'm going to share, yeah. Go ahead and share. Just in case the chat has some as well. Um, one that I that was thinking of um, actually. Well, so what is one? I'm going to share my screen quickly. Go ahead. Uh, do you share my screen right here. Yep. Can I? Okay. Cool. That's my screen. So it was one where they used. So strangely. It's one of these use cases where it says it uses AI, but it's really hard to find exactly what they've done. Uh, movie scripts, they do count, yeah. And I'm actually going to talk about a trailer script. So what they did for this one, it's they used uh, experimental Watson APIs and machine learning techniques um, to create a trailer for a movie based on other horror movies. So what they did, they fed a model hundreds of uh, like hours of horror movies. and then the model would kind of catch what would retain people's attentions. And then once it was trained to recognize a part of an horror movie that is like that people pay attention to or like really attracted to, then they would feed their own movie and it would say, okay, you need these 10 scenes to be in your trailer. Um, I, I tried to look a bit more about like what they did and there was a few other articles, let's say uh, fed more than hundred horror movie films. What they do mention is that they still needed someone to uh, paste the scenes together. It didn't do the whole thing, uh, so you still need. But it, they did manage to get the process down to like about two days instead of like they said ten to thirty days to do a trailer. Um, and I, I know there's so uh, Joyce mentioned movie scripts. Uh, I don't know if she's thinking of one in particular. I know they did a song as well, uh, a whole song generated by AI or with the help of AI, but I don't have the complete story. Uh, but yeah, that was the one I wanted to share. I'm gonna roll back to you. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's, uh, I'm still processing here. Oh. It's, <laughs> it's, it's not making for a very good stream experience. <laughs> um, and they ran so fast before. I may hit pause. Let me yeah. hit pause and see, if, see if it's just a, something else going on. I don't think the images were too big. I tried to resize them before I uploaded them. But yeah, there's, you know, I would say even while these are running, I'll just keep letting them run and we can kind of go on and see what mm -hmm. we produced here after the fact. Um, but, you know, algorithmia has got some interesting models, but once you start kind of going back to the, the, the public workspace we have here, you know, there's, there's a lot of different places you can go to kind of experience machine learning 
Um, a lot, very little of it actually has APIs, but there's a lot of interesting uh, approaches. And, and then you can see where people have um, created their own kind of SaaS service around it. So these guys, these are just basically taking um, actually a very common, the, the same uh, TensorFlow approach out of university, I believe Illinois, that I did. And they've then trained some of their own models and they're just using the exact same and, and they turned it into a SaaS service. So there is no API here. Um, they're just doing it. And so if you look at this one, the reason you can look at the algorotoscope filters and you'll see the same filter in there. And do so they, start... sorry, do they do that in real time or is it you take a picture and then apply the filter? Yeah, this this one's just a SaaS. So okay. they, have, they have their models already built and you, you're restricted to their models. Think Instagram, you know how Instagram yeah. only gives you 10 filters. So they have like, you know, a hundred filters, I believe. Yeah, um, I love to see. I love to see someone running like a TensorFlow light on a on some augmented reality glasses, and then you just see the world around you through mm -hmm. these filters. Yeah, that that would be interesting. That's an interesting approach. <laughs> um, one of these does have an API that I found. It's called Deep Artifacts, and here's a public workspace. You can find it in the in the Postman. Uh, gallery, gallery, or gallery, <laughs> um, Postman Explorer, excuse me, let me go back. You can find it in the public API network. Um, and it's got a handful of APIs here. I've already gotten my own keys. Um, and, but you can pull, uh, let's see if it still works. Man, is nothing working for me today? Like, yeah, maybe it's just a, uh... Your desktop agent that's not working. Yeah, that's what's going on, huh? <laughs> yeah. All right. Hold on one second. Let me Let's try to fire up the good old app. Fill up, fill, fill some space, Army, while I look at my <laughs> okay my I, agent here. I, 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 I show us back full screen. I'm not seeing anyone talking about uh, other usage of of AI. So let me just find uh, the one about. Actually, I have one that uh, one of my ex colleague did. Um, let me see if I can find it. Okay, I'm gonna share my screen. So what they did, and I think it's still, uh, it's still in beta, so it's not like something you can currently use. Oh, I'm sharing your screen. Interesting. Uh, interesting. <laughs> oh, that's not the one. That's the one. Cool. Call it. So what they did, um, they realized that with the whole working from home. So obviously it impacts uh, people working from home, but it impacts people that like play music together or like playing a band, et cetera. And um, one of the things that you always struggle with when you play online is kind of sync up your songs or sync up, someone plays the drum, someone plays the guitar and kind of be perfectly in sync. So what they did, they trained the model on uh, plenty of tracks. And then based on that model, you can send a bunch of uh, they had a whole choir somewhere in the UK with all the students sending their voice and then automatically, so you upload to that platform and they automatically match them up together to be at the right like tempo. Uh, and that, I, th I think, can you start now? Oh, it is actually available for, oh no, it's still a closed beta. So one of the usage of AI, which is not, um, which is not video at all, even though you can upload a video and it would like, play it at the right time, but it's all based on audio. And while we've spent a lot of time talking about uh, uh, image models, there is plenty of other type of usage of AI. And I know uh, before the before the stream, we chatted about quite a few things with, um, with Keen about how uh, AI is used. And one of the one of the usage that we, we see or we've heard about is how, um, at least in the UK, I don't know, how it is in the US, but in the UK, you can access all the CCTV cameras uh, online. Uh, and some people are just using these feeds to do some image, rec image recognition on it. So it's not quite altering what's happening, but what they're doing, they get the image and they scan what's on that image. And based on what they see, they can, uh, for example, a, a traffic uh, control, which just calculates the number of cars uh, in, a, in a frame and says, oh, there's a lot of traffic, but there's no traffic. And Ken, what you were talking about, want to calculate sales? 
Yeah, that's a, uh, I lived in New York a couple of years ago and I was working with a lot of folks doing investing and using APIs to kind of pull data and build intelligence around to, to influence their investing. And one of the hot things was, is pulling traffic camera footage and counting cars at stoplights and then estimating the sales, using that to estimate sales. Cause you have historical sales for a store, retail stores in an area. And then if you can count cars and you have the historic sales, you can project, like you can start understanding, well, there's a thousand cars pulled into this parking lot that could mean a boost in sales. And then they also are doing um, model recognition of the car. So <laughs> how do you actually, so it's not just there was a hundred cars, there was five uh, BMWs, yeah. eight Mercedes. So you know, they've got money. And so they're doing all of that. And I, you know, that got me thinking as far as where I wanted to go with my art, like, do I want to start pulling, um, you know, traffic cam and other footage and applying filters, you know, and like, can I pull traffic cam footage of a protest walking through an intersection? Um, and so starting to marry a bunch of different APIs together and see what I can actually produce. Oh, I got an algorithm error. Um, oh, but I got a result on this one. Okay, so it works. What, what, what did you change? Um, it was the agent. The, okay. agent, <laughs> the agent wasn't working. So it was like, um, so charcoal, I think, is actually that's their that's like a, a, a 500. That's them. That's not me. So that's not probably because isn't that because we use the external image? Oh, it could be invalid no, cross device. Could be. Let's try that in a little bit. So it said it put capital protest space pizza. Um, I won't be able to view it here, but if I go to my um, my data store here, I should be able to go to data sources. The space pizza always makes me think of that parody of Star Wars where Jabba the Hutt is just <laughs> a, a huge pizza. I forgot the name of it. Space yeah, pizza, space pizza, pizza, pizza the Hut. Pizza the Hut. Yeah. <laughs> Um, demo output. So I put it, I'm dumping these into this folder. Um, space balls. I think that's the one. Yes. Yeah. Space balls. So space good. meatballs. Close enough. <laughs> Great movie, by the way. Yep. Um, all right. Let me see. Loading the image. Let's see what it looks like. Come on, baby. Um, everything is just slow today. Uh, all right. So we got capital protest space pizza. Let's look at. And there it is. Ooh. There's our capital space pizza. So you, you can see how you can start creating some pretty interesting different approaches. It really, the combination of like what the colors reflect on and grab the textures, um, it's interesting. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, so there's, there's, there's one. So maybe the, um, so Sean is saying that Trump protest looks sweet. <laughs> if he's talking about the protest or the style. <laughs> <laughs> Depends. Um, yeah, this is so yeah. I did, yeah, I do I do like it too. I really like the style. It it's it's kind of different, you know, and how so you know I could uh apply that to any of the the deep those filters they have. I could change let's let's try a different one here and see what we get. Um where was deep filter actually? Who did deep filter? Um, I'll just go the proper way and look. <laughs> go to search. Um, deep filter. So let's grab another one of the filters. What would what might look cool doing that? Um, Purple storm. Purple storm. Where was that? Purple. The middle one. Yeah. There we are. Let's go purple storm. I can type that. I don't even need to copy and paste that. Let's go to body here and let's um, use the same photo and purple storm. And let's hit send. And so it came back with a, you can still see it here. There's a duration. So I guess that's the time of, oh yeah, yeah this one was five seconds. So five seconds. So that's yeah. not bad. That's not too bad. That's uh. so let's go here back one. 
probably overrode it because you didn't change the oh i didn't change the name good call yeah there's our purple storm so slightly different you can see how it takes the edges i'm always fascinated by how it uh it grabs things so yeah there's uh there's the deep filter um let's see if we can get the charcoal one to work real quick with a with a non-external link um so let's grab let's just grab that photo we're using in deep filter <laughs> make it easy this is the you know pasting in ids and values is always the challenge with apis right like at some point with postman come on come there, there will be an ai for that don't you yeah worry. it's like <laughs> auto completing looking doing lookups from you know other data stores um we'll get we'll get to that so all right we're gonna where do we want to output this i think i want to output it similar to it's funny that they they have save path and they have outputs so broken glass not very good api design let's try this let's try that might might have been the problem with it is we're not actually designating where it should go mm -hmm. um so i'm going to call this um capital protest bw and let's see what we get here let's see if we get some more love no nah, no such file or directory demo output it, it doesn't say if it's the source or the output that is the issue as well yeah No such file or directory. Oh, hmm. it's complaining about RCRC? Source. Hmm. So that's a valid one because we used it in the other one. Yeah. So that's, hmm. anyways, um, <laughs> that's so algorithmy is a pretty interesting one. If you want to start get, playing with this pub, this workspace is public. Um, I have it public as part of my API evangelist. You can find it in the Postman network. You'll have to get your own keys, but you can start playing with um, and seeing. But really, you know, there's, um, what is this one? This is Deep Artifacts. This one was interesting because I got it to run as well. And it's got quite a few different filters. This was the, the styles, as they call it. So what are the different styles that you can... Um, apply so what's this one let's see so yeah so they've got some of their own filters let's go ahead and um grab that that filter id and then let's go to where we're gonna make a filter and i believe so hmm, this is interesting that i did this before <laughs> Sixty four embedded in here. Um, do you know how to do base sixty four in Postman pretty easily, as far as an image? Uh, not directly in Postman. I just go on Google, type yeah, JPEG to base sixty four. Yeah, that's what I did too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so here's the filter I want to apply. Let's paste this in here um what was so let's grab this one because it's out here um so image to base 64. um looks like i've used this before <laughs> uh do you have it locally or is it on um, i have i do i think because i just yeah. let me unshare your screen just in case uh, I don't have anything on. <laughs> I'm, I cleaned up. Um, mine, um, broken glass. Here it is. Cool. Does it just do it? The user experience here isn't that great. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the best one, Kin. Oh, it looks like this is a progress bar up here, maybe? Yeah, there it is. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. All right, so it's just a big image. So I grab in the base 64, going back, I'm going to paste that base 64 here in the body, and I'm going to hit send. Let's see what we get. So this is similar to, you know, algorithmia. Okay, so I got a submission ID. 
I never liked this. So now you've got to go to another <laughs> endpoint. You've got to grab the submission ID and go grab the results, which has a submission yeah. ID. Property. Sounds like you're running two requests, one after the other, but you could automate that. Yeah, <laughs> you could. And if someone wants to do that in this workspace, that would be awesome. So what do we got here? So now it, it took that. Let's actually load that in a browser because Postman window is not always conducive to big. All right. So it's supposed to highlight the eyes, which. Mm -hmm. But it did. Look, here's the here's the original image flicking back between. Nice. So yeah, you can, I would say, you know, Algorithmia, they haven't added any filters in a couple of years. So I'm guessing that that algorithm's fairly dead. Um, this one is, what is this? This is deep art effects. Um, let's not, why can't I open a new browser, new tab here with links in the, over oh, I can't, okay. I'm just not, I'm just user error. Um, so yeah, so deep artifacts is a, is a pretty interesting API to get this done. Um, the pub, the workspace is public. You can browse all their styles. You can upload your own images and apply those styles and you can get the results. Um, as Arlemy said, uh, a little automation would probably make that a little easier. Um, if you had a, a queue of different images to use, you could, uh, stitch these three API calls together, run it as a runner, um, uh, I'm not used to the runner not being there, um, but uh, but yeah. So that's I would say that's the basis. I mean, where I'm looking to go with this is how do you apply this to different images? You know, pulling the traffic cam footage. Um, I started looking at uh, where's our workspace. I think I closed our workspace. I'm getting too many tabs open. Um, Let's see, our AI, where's my workspace? Is it art one at the top? No, I don't remember what I called it. Didn't we paste it in the in the, in the the channel? Oh, I actually don't think we did. That's a good um, point. We should paste it. I bet you it's here under one of my recent workspaces. Making AI and art. Yes, I want to leave this one. Let me paste it at the same time. Yeah, so here's our here's the public workspace for making AI and art with my outline. Um, but this is kind of where I started going after this is one, you can't talk about art APIs without uh, looking at art galleries. There's quite a few if you want to try to find if you're going to be building models. Um, here's art you can steal from. There's, there's even more than this. This was just a tip of the, um, I started looking at, at music, um, and audio there's free sound, which is an interesting one. And I have a workspace set up for free sound. Um, I really couldn't make the linkage between how to make, I couldn't find any good APIs that would allow me to make, uh, audio. Sorry, I'm cleaning up some browsers here. Um, to make audio. To make audio. And this is kind of traffic cabers, traffic cameras. What am I talking about? Um, this is where I wanted to get with, with different types of APIs. And so when you when you search for a lot of things, a audio or drawing, you end up with browser APIs to get into a whole new classification of APIs is web audio is an actual a uh, W3 standard for an audio API. And so this is your 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 speakers. This is this is sound coming through your browser and being able to work with your workstation. And there's WebGL which is, you know, uh, for drawing, for graphics. And so this is where I wanted to try to go is I wanted to try to pull images of protests of 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 relevant things and then draw or combine. And this led me to um, the object cut API, which is will extract images from, from your photo. So can I, you know, can I grab search for other people's photos 
grab objects from their photos and compile them and then apply filters to that. And then, you know, at what, and really kind of doing this partially because of that copyright, like at what point do <laughs> I do, does it become mine because I've, I've cracked it, you know, I've, I've tweaked it, I've uh, uh, cut it. I don't know, you know, I'm just playing around, so. Yeah, well, what, I, I, one thing that just popped to my head that I think I'm just gonna build because it looks fun is from images of protest, mm -hmm. just cut out the flags or signs and guess oh. what the protest is. Oh, interesting. And make a, make a quiz, just like guess the protest website. So here's, so you could do with this is where do I have it with images? So Bing search API. Um, actually, I think I have a, a workspace here somewhere. Let me see if I still do. Yeah, I do have it open, drag it over here. So Bing, you can do image search and you can do trending image search. So you could do a search for a protest um, and it would actually uncover images for you. Oh, access denied. <laughs> oh, I guess I gotta go environment. Oh no, probably still don't have my key. Yeah, it's um, a big workspace. So. But, uh, um, but you can do image searches. And then, so could you Daisy do a, a custom search, grab the flags from it and assemble those into another image, like assemble all the flags and then have people, you know, there's, there's some interesting use cases there. Definitely. Oh, this, uh, <laughs> so, uh, um, um, uh, listening to that podcast and what they do, um, <clears throat> they take different songs, they match them up together, they play them at the same time, and you have to guess all the songs, which is like atrocious for your ears, but it's quite yeah. fun. Yeah. You, you could do that with protests, just get like flags from different protests, mix them together, just as if, it, if it was the same protest, uh -huh. and then yeah. you guess the different protests, which is probably harder. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and I'm just, yeah, I'm just getting so many ideas. There's a lot of different, you know, the matchup potential here. I, what I feel like I want to get to is I want to have all these different APIs in a single workspace. And that's what mm -hmm. we can do here. I've got some of them. And then that's where the remix power really comes into this is once you have the Bing image search, you have the music brains, you know, um, another area that I didn't explore is you can do um, object recognition, but you can do uh, categorization. So it'll give you a, a list of tags from what's in the image. So it'll say there's a bird, there's a flag, there's a, a building there. And can you then grab those tags and search for sounds from free sound and then marry up protest images with sounds, you know? Um, so I think there's having all of these different APIs ready to go in a workspace, then you can start remixing uh, art in a different way. And the layers of AI, you know, it depends on what the APIs are, are up to. Um, yeah. Where can we go next? Or uh, well, I guess we're a little bit over, huh? Yeah, so. I was gonna say that's probably gonna be, it's gonna make for a nice next stream. I was actually, so I have a stream plan. Um, actually, we've just announced the streams for next month. Uh, let me let me share that with everyone. Uh, my screen is here. Yeah, let me share my quickly. So we've just announced the stream for next month, and there's going to be. Are you coming back in? Yeah, you're coming back in, and you're going to talk about zero to async API with Kevin and oh. Fran. Exciting. Uh, <laughs> we have what about stocking your favorite band and spinning up a microsite. Uh, with Contentful, but what I wanted to come to is that um, um, OpenAI, which yeah. have an open beta, and which with which you can do so many like weird or like impressive things, and that could be. I think that's that's where we're gonna go next from here. Uh, that was a yeah. We we saw a lot of things on how do you can use AI APIs and just like apply it to images. Uh, you've given me a lot of ideas, <laughs> for sure, and I'm sure like we we've uh, given some to people on the chat. But yeah, uh, we'll probably have another stream. We'll end this one here, I think, unless uh, people have some questions. If you have any AI related questions, art related questions, ask Kin. <laughs> and if you have any Postman question, ask Kin as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I did put a, a, a collection in that workspace because I don't actually have any collections. I'll sh add some after this, but I'm going to keep that workspace going and keep this conversation going. And there's a, a collection in there right now called feedback. And if you want to leave comments right there, there's a comment thread. You can, you can start there. So. Let me actually, I'll just show that. I'll demo that so people know what to do. So that's the workspace, which is for now empty, but Kenny's going to add to it. Uh, that's feedback collection. So if you want to do it, I mean, you can always ping Kin wherever because he's everywhere. But what you can do is so we can track stuff here. You can go on that collection, go in the comments here, and just add any feedback. Wait for the collections to come in and just add a comment. And then he gets notif notified. If you have any ideas of what you want to see in that workspace, you can let him know. Uh, but yeah, that's what you can do. And so I've shared that link in the chat. I'm just going to show it quickly again on the screen. But yeah, please. maybe in the future. I mean, it'd be nice to maybe do. Um, I don't know what the open API AI one will be, but if we could maybe one do that's ML just dedicated to text, you know, and content. I think that might make for an interesting one too. It, um, yeah. So. So, um, someone saying Kin is omnipresent and omnipotent. Uh -huh. I'm not uh, sure how to pronounce that. <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, so that's one of the so that's the main use case that comes from OpenAI is people generating code from it or like code snippets, mm -hmm. and they go, oh, uh, generate a call to a database that gets me the last ten people that have done this, and it just generates the SQL uh, line. So yeah. I'm wondering if there's a way to generate like maybe specs. Or I don't know. So one that I want to do is, so I write a lot of scrape scripts for doc, API documentation to mm. generate open API from the docs. It would be nice to start building an ML model that would just, you could give it the URL, the static API docs, and it would parse and create open API from it. But um, so yeah, got lots of use cases, lots of use cases. <laughs> But yeah, I'll, I'll uh, keep that in mind. Hopefully in March, we'll do this one. Uh, I'm not sure who I'm going to bring on. Maybe I'll bring uh, Kin again. Uh, we'll see. But for now, that's it for today. Hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, if there's still some people from the raid, uh, thanks again for joining. Um, I checked quickly if there was anyone we could raid, but I did not find anyone, unfortunately. Uh, we'll be back again next Thursday. What are we doing next Thursday? Let me quickly check. I don't want to say anything wrong. Um, next Thursday, we are breaking APIs. Oh, uh, nice. Yeah. So we have Trent and Evan that are part of our engineering team, and they'll show us how to break an API, because why not? You know, <laughs> who knows better than our quality team? They know how to break <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you, everyone. See you next time. Hopefully, uh, join us whenever. And bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.